Hi, I'm Jacob Wolf. Welcome to the ESPN Esports channel and to the Eco. Normally, you'll probably see us live, uh, but we are actually trying something a little bit different this week with players on break and with some other things going on. And we're going to do a little bit of odd. I want to talk to you about a couple different things, which you can find this one and the other one on youtube.com slash ESPN Esports, which is probably where you are right now. Um, but first of all, I want to dive into what's been going on with the Counter-Strike Professional Players Association. Over the course of my career, over the past couple of years, I've done a lot of reporting on player unions, players associations, what's going on with League of Legends in the case of the League Championship Series, and also what's going on in Counter-Strike with the Counter-Strike Professional Players Association. Last week, there was a letter that was written by Flashpoint, which is the North American League owned by many teams such as Cloud9 and Gen.G, Immortals, and others, that was sent to the CSPPA and then consequently leaked, uh, by, or leaked out to the public by DK, the reporter, uh, who published it on Double Tap. In this letter, there were a lot of allegations against the CSPPA, but the biggest one above them, and the one I think that needs to be discussed, is that there was an allegation that members of the CSPPA, executive management of the CSPPA, that they represented uh, some of the players of Heroic, and if you remember, Heroic is also the team that was supposed to be a part of Fun Plus Phoenix, but didn't end up a part of Fun Plus Phoenix because one of their players, ES3 Tag, moved over to Astralis or signed a Ford contract with Astralis that he would move there eventually. That deal fell apart. And the allegation from Flashpoint is that the CSPPA meddled, uh, or the management of the CSPPA meddled, by helping represent the heroic players in this debacle. You know, there's a lot to break down here. I just want to go through a little bit of the statements because the CSPPA did come out and deny that um, in a post that they made on Twitter. Uh, they said the C CSPPA has not breached any obligations towards Flashpoint with regards to dialogue CSPPA had with Flashpoint regarding testing of sponsored monitors. The other part of this was that there were monitors that were uh, not correct from a technical perspective, that they were supposed to use specific ones as for Flashpoint that they did not. Obviously, many of the players have played remotely. Um, and the CSPPA, part of their uh, rule is to make sure that fair play is across the board, which has been particularly difficult given what's going on with COVID-19 and people working from all afar. But the big part of this is, is what's going on with Heroic. And so part of this statement, which you're saying on screen now, is the CP CSPPA has not breached any obligations towards Flashpoint with regards to the allegations concerning agency services. Firstly, the CSPPA has no obligations towards Flashpoint with regards to agency services under any of the agreements entered into by the party. Further, the CSPPA did not act as an agency with regards to the Heroic players as alleged in the letter. The CSPPA provided free advice and assistance to the Heroic players in connection with the dialogue with teams, as we would do with any other CSPPA member in a tough situation. Providing such help to players is a core goal of the CSPPA. We note that it is common practice for players' associations and sports across the world to provide agency services for their members. This because players are professional athletes and often need help and assistance when dealing with complicated commercial and legal matters. This is especially true in the context of the next uh, of the esports scene, where athletes are very young and no standard player contract with balanced rights exist as in established traditional sports. The CSPPA will provide such services for our members going forward, while at all times taking into account and, and adhering to national legislation on this matter. So I want to break that down for a second. Holy, that first part is not true in a part of that statement, which is that most unions represent players as agencies. That's definitely not right in American sports. And remember who they're dealing with here. Flashpoint is owned by teams who are invested in by many traditional American sports owners. Put that out there. That's not the case. The MBPA doesn't negotiate on behalf of teams with teams and leagues, right? They negotiate on behalf of the players collectively across team with the league, the NBA. It's the same for the National Football Players Association. It's the same for the Major League Baseball Players Association. They all do that in that role. They do not act as agents. There are separate agencies that do that. So by admitting that, just saying that they will act as an agency, there's something wrong here, both from the player perspective and also from the PPA perspective. So the players should not just rely on the PPA. They are a resource, yes, but they are a resource for a different reason. The PBA should be negotiating as it has with Flashpoint, ESL, DreamHack, and the other TOs to establish things like the player break, which we're on this week. That's their role. It is not to represent players in any sort of team dispute. 
if they have to get involved because and this is what they've argued a little bit because flashpoint heroic and fun plus couldn't figure things out that's different but acting to them as agents in this regard is a much different scenario, and that should not be what they are doing. There should be other agencies, and there are other agencies that these players should employ to do that for them. So it, that's that's the brief about it. They circled back a little bit because really the crux of this situation is that two people, Mads Onlin, who is the CEO of the CSPPA, and Michael Doy, the COO of CSPPA, both previously worked for a company called Def Sport. They said that they no longer work at Def Sport. And for clarity, the Def, or Def Sport is the Danish Elite Athletes Association. They, they previously worked at Def Sport while also serving as the lead of the CSPPA, but they said that they no longer work for Def Sport as of January 1st, 2020. There are also allegations that at certain points in time, that Def Sport represented the players of Astralis, who are Danish, while also these people acting on behalf of the CSPPA. That's a massive conflict of interest. And the fact that that's not out any sooner is a little bit surprising. I have nothing wrong with Danish players uh, getting representation. It's super important. But what is frustrating is the fact that this happened. It's not only unfair to the other players that are in the CSPPA, the ones who are not Danish and are part of the broader Counter-Strike Global Offensive scene, which spans many, many different nationalities. But it's also really unfair to a lot of the teams. The fact that they have that information about salary to that level of extent that they are able to collect that information from the CSPPA directly because they are being disclosed a bunch of different information from other teams and then use it in negotiations on behalf of their players. CSPPA and Mads, uh, and, Mads and Michael said that they took no commissions to do this. But they did disclose this earlier, before uh, ESL Pro League was restructured and before Flashpoint. There's an issue here, and the solution I'm proposing here in this video is I'm hoping that Counter-Strike players start self-funding. That's the issue with the CSPPA. It's the issue with the LCSPA also, is that if you want to be able to have a fully independent body, right, different, than what the CSPPA is now, but similar to what the MBPA, the NFLPA, and the MLBPA are, you self-fund. Players would take their salaries, they would take a portion of their salaries, and they would pay a member fee every single year, and that would pay for the staff that works in the CSPPA. The reason that they... that I'm not going to blame Mads and Michael for taking a job and working at Def Sport. Everybody's got to have a living wage, especially right now. But what's bothersome is the conflict of interest that exists between those two entities. This is something I've heard from a lot of people in this space, tournament organizers, teams, even some players. And I think that it wholeheartedly needs to be addressed right on the nose. I've been unsatisfied what was what was put out by the CSPPA in terms of both what they put on their Twitter and what was released to HLTV. But what's frustrating is the fact that this is still not addressed. We sit here on July 6th, several days after all of this came to light, and no one has a solution. So I hope that players both take more responsibility for this and that this can be busted out because this is actually very bad that there were any relationships in the very beginning at the foundational part of this CSPPA, which in the first place was supposed to be a, quite a good thing. But that's all from me. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. For more content, you can find it here on our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ESPN underscore esports and me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Jacob Wolf.